but all right. 20 things, and I'm just going to read some of them, uh, 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 that all husbands wish their wives understood about them. Number one, we don't know how we feel about things. We only know what we think about things. When you ask how we feel, our processor gets stuck and we have to shut down the system and reboot so we can speak again. That's what the empty stare means. <laughs> okay. Next, uh, we just need the facts. All other information is unnecessary and unwanted. Another one, we need tools. It doesn't matter if we use them. We need the biggest engine, the most horsepower, the fastest, whatever. Power is good. Uh. <laughs> we were put on this planet to fix things. In fact, even Jesus was a carpenter before he was a savior. So sharing a problem with us that you don't want solves like going to a restaurant to stare at the silverware. <laughs> Some of you get this, all right? We are going to pick up our underwear. We are just letting them air out for a few days so they don't stink up the washing machine. <laughs> All right, there's more, but I'm not going <laughs> to. We got to get to the message. Hallelujah. So it's all in how you see it. I want to share this with you too before we actually uh, get going. Because, you know, I do talk to you a lot about some of the goofball stuff that's being uh, perpetrated in the body of Christ. And a lot of it's masquerading as grace, and it's not grace. Amen? Well, here's one. And, and I got to tell you guys this because it's the truth. The whole world lies in wickedness. It says in 1 John 5, I believe it's verse 19. So there's a bent in the media to conform us to a certain way of thinking. One prominent rapper, and I think he's getting heat for this, but he came out and was talking about all the gay and homosexual themes that are in all the media stuff. We just went and uh, took the kids to see Finding Dory. There's a gay lesbian scene in there. You know, that's, it's pointing us. And he made this rapper, made this statement. He said that in 10 years, how many people will be involved in that lifestyle because they're pumping it? This is why the church needs to be the church. I just did a post on talking about when you stand for what's right, that's not self-righteousness. We got to get that. Because see, the, the enemy uses that accusation to try to back us off. That, I, you know, people want to think I'm self-righteous, get over it. We're standing up for what's right. Amen. We have to. Amen? And see, and so, so the enemy is a master at lying, deception, and intimidation. That's why he goes about as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion, but he goes about as a roaring lion. But now I'm just going to share this before we actually get into the message. Uh, somebody put this up. Are you ready? This is from somebody who went off the deep end. And, and, and they, long story short, but they, they said, transgendered people are recognized in ancient Hebrew. <laughs> there are six words for gender. Not that that would make, would make it to any English translations. And it should be linked to specific proteins in DNA with solid neuroscience reports. I am so grieved at the hate and ignorance. So done with it. Now, listen to this. Somebody, a doctor, comments and says, I'm a neuroscientist. No protein or collection of proteins accounts for a lifestyle ch choice. This is fallacious. I would also point out that there is a strong political bent in favor of both funding and publishing work which supports the current sociological trends. Any contradictory work is squashed. So I just want you guys to be aware of that kind of stuff. We have the victory, but we've got to take our place. We've got to stand up for what's right. We have to do it. It's made this country great. Amen? And for those of you that aren't from America, I know you love America. Amen. All right, let's get into the word. What do you say? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, let me speak clear, let people hear clear, and let us grow in our faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. How healthy is your faith? That's the topic of today's message. How healthy is my faith? You know, when you go to a doctor or you give blood or whatever, one of the things they do is they take your pulse, right? They want to make sure everything's, that's one of the ways they check to make sure everything's uh, going right. But you know, the, we need to take our, the pulse of our faith because you, there, you can absolutely tell how healthy your faith is. And we're going to talk about that. Um, this, this is probably going to go on for more than just this week. And I encourage you to hear all these messages and not only hear them, but do them. And if you'll, if you'll begin to do this, once again, it's not God giving. That's the problem. God's already given. We're already blessed. We've already got it. But we have to take it. Amen? All right. How healthy is your faith? Faith can be strong. It can be healthy. Or it can be weak. And can grow and become strong. Did you know that? Faith can be strong. Faith can be healthy. Or faith can be weak. Right? Right? And faith can grow and become strong. Isn't that good news? All right, let me, let, me, let me show you some of these places. Go to Romans 
chapter 12 and verse 9. Romans 12 and verse 9. I'm going to try to stick with this because this is really good. Let me say something. But what did I say? Romans, 12, Romans 4 verse 19. That's what I meant. That's good too. But let me say something here. When we talk about faith that we have, I know somebody's saying, well, we have the measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. We've obtained like precious faith. 2 Peter 1, 1. We have the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. In our spirit, we've got faith. Amen? We have knowledge. The Bible says we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things, right? 1 John 2, 20. But how many of you know that in my mind, I don't know everything? I know that shocks some people. because <laughs> Maybe you do. I'm kidding. Nobody does. We're very limited. But, in our, but, but we're, we're talking about how our faith can grow in its operation in our life. And the Bible has a lot to say about that. Let me show you Romans 4.19. This is talking about Abraham. And the Bible says, And being not weak in faith, stop. You can be weak in faith. Amen? A lot of people are. They're weak in faith. I'm going to tell you how, we're going to take our spiritual pulse today. We're going to talk about how you can, you can take your pulse and find out how healthy is my faith. All right? And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. In other words, it had to do with what Abraham was focused on, right? How many know Abraham was not perfect? You know that? He lied not once, but twice that we have recorded. And God told, I believe it was Abimelech in Genesis 12 or whatever, somewhere around there. He said, he said, you're a dead man. But Abraham's the one who lied. <laughs> How many know Abraham was not perfect? Do you know why God could say that? Everybody say covenant. covenant. See, we need to understand covenant. But anyhow, Abraham was not weak in faith. Why? He did not consider his own body. He did not consider how it looked. His focus wasn't on his own body. What did he consider? The promise from God. In fact, come right back here and jump over to Hebrews 11, 15. I'll show you this one. You know, you can directly connect how you feel, what you say, to what you're focused on. Amen. This is why we have to be in the Word. Not for God's sake. God loves you if you never get in the Word. But you need it because there's plenty of negative forces on the outside that are trying to pull you down. Amen. Uh, and nobody else has noticed. <laughs> We've all noticed that. And man, they're vicious. That's why I keep saying you're in a war. Not with God. Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, Luke 12, 32. Jesus said that. He gave you the kingdom, right? Not trying to defeat the devil. He's already defeated. But we are battling with lies. We are battling with stuff that comes right here that people say all these types of things. The devil, you know the devil uses people? You know God does too. All right. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out of, they might have had opportunity to have returned. If your mind is full of something, you'll have opportunity to return. Look at Acts 7.39. This is Stephen's discourse right before he was rocked to sleep. He was martyred, right? Look what he says in Acts 7.39. You know why he was martyred? Because he wasn't politically correct. He lived for something bigger than this little vapor of a life. We need to think more about eternity. This life is like this and it's over. <laughs> I guess I got stuck on that hand too. <laughs> but anyhow, to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them. And this is what I want you to see. And in their hearts turn back again to Egypt. You see that? See, a lot of times we try to change people's behavior, but if their heart doesn't change, their behavior doesn't change. You know, I, I got something I told Jen. I said, man, I got this post thing I'm going to write on, on the danger of enabling people. If there's one thing I'm learning in my Christian walk and as a minister, if you enable people, for example, if people don't respect your time, they won't respect your wisdom. Do you know that? I have seen it over and over again. If people just, they have no respect for your time, trust me, they're not going to respect what you say. And so when we do, sometimes we enable flesh. Amen? This is the wisdom of God. But anyhow. All right, now go back to Romans uh, 4.19. Faith can be, be strong and healthy, or it can be weak. Faith can grow and become strong. Say, so that's good news for me. Look at this. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not look at the circumstance. Why? Because he had a promise. How many know we got promises too? What are you considering? Now, 
Watch this next verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. And see, we stop right there. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You see it? There's many. We're going to look at a lot of places. How do you, can you tell if your faith is strong and healthy? Do you give glory to God? Are you a praiser or are you a complainer? Most people that I know are complainers, including me a lot of the time. I find, you know, I'm going to give you an assignment. Just take one hour. One hour and just try not to complain. Don't say anything. Don't complain. Just do it. Most people can't do it. And, and instead, just praise the Lord. Amen? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to lift my voice. I'm going to glorify the Lord. I'm going to praise Him even when it doesn't look right. If you will begin to praise the Lord, your life will change. Amen. Amen? You know, praise affects you. It affects the devil. But it affects God. Satan can't stand praise. He'll run from praise. Why? Because he wanted the glory for himself. But most people don't praise the Lord. Rarely. Do you know this church service when we have worship? It should be an exciting time of worshiping the Lord because of our weekly relationship with God, and it should culminate right here. Glory to God! We're gonna, hallelujah! Amen. Amen. We're going to have that. In fact, this series that I'm starting, I'm calling it Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs out of Ephesians 5.19. What is a psalm, what is a hymn, and what is a spiritual song? Tell you what, if you're built up on the inside, you got more pressure going on the inside than what the outside's coming at you. I heard a story one time of a man who's talked about when they were in school, they, they, they took one of those Bunsen burners and they put the tin can on it and they would heat it up and the air inside the can would expand and then they would seal it off. And then they took it off that hot Bunsen burner and they set it down and they would watch that can just crush right before their very eyes. Why? Because once that air was, that hot air was sealed tight and causing that tin can to expand, once they took it off, the air began to contract. And once it began to contract, there were air pockets on the inside and the pressure from the outside was greater than the pressure from the inside. The reason most Christians fall apart is because the pressure from the outside is greater than the pressure on the inside. We're all tempted in this area. We need to praise the Lord. We need to lift our voice even when we don't feel like it. You turn this around and this becomes a habit. You move from Grumble Street to Thanksgiving living and you're going to change your world. Your world's going to change. It's what Paul said in Philippians 4.11. I've learned... 4, 10, and 11, right around there. He said, I've learned whatever state I am in, therewith to be content. Whether I'm abounding or I'm abased, I've learned to be content. That's called heavenly living. That's called a prosperous soul. Amen. Amen? See, the problem is we've made prosperity just what the world calls prosperity. Now, I believe in that for the right reason. But a lot of times, if God doesn't have your heart, those things will take you out. Come on. We're living for something a lot bigger than this little life, guys. And it matters what we do in this life. It totally matters. I mean, I, I, want, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful serving son. So do you. If you're born again, you're going to heaven. But I'm telling you, you, you and I will never be satisfied until we yield to God. That's why people can't get satisfied because they weren't created for this world. They were created for something bigger than this world. Amen. That's why they just, you just turn up the noise of the world so you don't have to think about it. Just get busy. You ever notice how when you turn up the radio, your singing gets really good? <laughs> Man, I sound just like the record. So Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. You know, unbelief will cause you to stagger at the promise of God. But was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith? Giving glory to God. One more verse. And being, look at the results of that. You see that? And being fully persuaded. And being fully persuaded. The reason a lot of times we have a hard time receiving the promise of God because our heart's not fully persuaded. What's the key to being fully persuaded? Being strong in faith. What's the key to being strong in faith? Giving glory to God consistently. Do, a, do an inventory of what comes out your mouth. I challenge you to do an inventory because what's coming out of your mouth is what's in your heart. This is a challenge message. God loves your praises. We're going to go into so many verses. You're going to know what psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs are. And I'm going to tell you, it's so, so good. God wants you. God's more interested in you than what you can do for Him. God loves you. And when you love on God, you release the life of Christ that's on the inside of you as a born-again child of God, and it affects things. It affects your emotions. It affects your nerves. It affects everything in a positive way. 
We're waiting on our circumstances to get perfect and then we'll praise the Lord. How's that working for you? Do you know as soon as you get rid of one problem, there'll be something else to take your attention. And the goal is to get your focus on the problem and off of the person who has the promise. That's the goal. Because if your focus gets off, then your mouth will get off because your heart's off. I challenge you, man, to start praising the Lord. I've seen this in my own life. You know isn't it amazing how you can know something and lose it? You ever notice that? I've known a lot of things that I keep relearning. But I remember years ago, I went through a devastating situation. I mean, it was, it was not good. And I remember I thought I was just going to break down. And I remember something on the inside of me, I started praising the Lord. I just started lifting my voice. I started glorifying the Lord. And as a result, by the time I got to my friend's house, I was down in the dumps emotionally and I was hiring a kite emotionally. Now, whether that happens or not, God is worthy of your praise. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Praise the Lord. Glorify the Lord. All right, we're going to get into it more. Hang on. So this is the result of Abraham being strong in faith through giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that, what, that what, what he had promised he was able also to perform. Next verse. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Isn't that powerful? Righteousness means the way it should be. How many know God wants to get things in your life and my life? How many know he can't unless we cooperate? All right. So you can be strong in faith. Let me give you a few more verses. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. Then I'm going to go to... This is all good. I want to make sure we don't, don't short-circuit it. We are bound to give... We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or proper, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Isn't that awesome? As I said it earlier. Your faith grows exceedingly, exceedingly. God's excited about that. Do you know your faith is either growing or it's diminishing or waning? Did you know that? Amen? I love uh, one thing I read recently, and I've read it before, but that a lot of people identify more with rejection. It's why they speak rejection more than they do with their acceptance in Christ. When you start identifying, God loves you. God loves me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If I never see anything in this life, God has been more than good to me. But I guarantee you, you can't stay that way and not see good things in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that prosperity is more than just financial. You know that that's just one facet. There's relational prosperity. There's uh, there's. Uh, uh, peace of mind prosperity. There's all kinds of prosperities. Health prosperity. There's all kinds of ways that God wants us to walk in His blessing. Amen? Praise God. All right. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or proper because your faith groweth exceedingly and the love, charity, for every one of you aboundeth uh, toward each other. So we see faith can grow. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Jump to, let me think here. 1 Thessalonians 3, 8 through 10. First Thessalonians, I'm just, I'm just establishing this fact that is your faith strong and your faith can grow, it can be weak or it can be healthy. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. I love that. I just had to do that. Paul's saying, we live if you church of Thessalonica stand fast in the Lord. How many people have that mindset? If you're born again, you know the love of God in your heart loves people? That's a Moving right along. Next. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before God? Next verse. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face, face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. You know, things can be lacking in my faith. And Paul said, we want to see you. We're praying that we can see you to perfect that which is lacking in your faith. This mindset that because Jesus has done it all, and he has, that, okay, now you can just kick back and eat blueberries, chocolate covered, of course, uh, is just not God. We're in a fight, guys, not with God. See, that's where we were wrong before. We thought we were making God do something. We thought our faith moved God. No, God's already moved by grace. Your faith takes what he's already supplied by grace. Amen? So Paul said, we want to see you so we can perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now jump over to Titus. Chapter, let me think here. Uh, chapter 1. Let's just do chapter 1. And go with about verse 9. We'll start with verse 9 to about 13, I think. Because I want to read a Greek word here for you. 
Okay? Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine. Amen? Sound How many know there's a need in the land for some sound doctrine? Thank God for it. I, I, the longer I go through this thing, the more I see that why the New Testament writers were so adamant against this crazy stuff that would creep in the church and totally mess people up. Amen? But it says, sound doctrine, we can exhort and convince the gainsayers. Next verse. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially or especially they of the circumcision or Jewish. Next verse. Whose mouths must be stopped. <laughs> who subvert or overthrow whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Next verse. One of them, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, or lazy gluttons. This witness is true. Wherefore, go out and have coffee with them and talk to them and reason with them and try to tell them that they need to straighten up because you don't want to offend anybody. That isn't what it says. Paul tells Titus, rebuke them sharply. Get in their cereal bowl and tell them they're off from the word of God. That's what he's saying. Now watch. That they may be sound in the faith. And here's what I want you to see. Sound in the faith. The word sound is a word. It means to be sound, to be well, to be in good health. And I love this. Metaphorically, it was used of Christians whose opinions are free from any mixture of air. <laughs> whose opinions are free from any mixture of air. Who's, I'm telling you, I'm a doctrinal junkie. We need sound doctrine. Yeah, I mean, and I'm telling you, the only reason people in the body of Christ are messed up when God has given us so much is because they believe wrong, because they've been taught wrong. Yeah, That's the only reason. And it says, uh, another meaning of this word sound is of one who keeps the graces and is strong. Amen. Now jump, give me the Amplified Bible. Uh, uh, from Galatians 5, 9. How important is this? He's talking to believers, Christians. Look at the Amplified of Galatians 5, 9. The King James says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. He's talking about a little bit of a mixture of air, of legalistic doctrine, will mess up the whole lump. Now this is the Amplified. A little leaven, a slight, somebody say slight, inclination to air or a few false teachers. This is not outside that come to your door on Saturday morning. This is in the body of Christ. I was thinking about someone today that he's got a lot of good stuff. He really does. But you know what? I can't listen to him. You know why? He's a Calvinist. And that's a doctrine inspired by Satan that said God randomly selects some like I'm going to save you. I'm not going to save you. I'm going to save you. And it totally perverts predestination. And I just can't fellowship with that. It's demonic. Amen. It's demonic. Monic. Monic. <laughs> All right. A little leaven, a slight inclination to err, or a few false teachers leavens the whole lump. It, look at this. It perverts the whole conception of faith or misleads the whole church. It perverts faith. It perverts faith. It perverts faith. Faith is the hand that takes what God has already supplied by grace. So God can have all the graces out there, but if my hand's messed up and I can't receive it, like trying to open them batteries with bee stung hands, <laughs> it's tough, right? Because the hand's messed up. All right. So faith can be healthy and strong, or faith can be weak, and faith can grow. Amen. Now, with that said, I'm going to begin to talk about psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Go to Ephesians 5, and we'll start with verse 17. Ephesians 5 and verse 17. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now I love to start with this verse when I'm sharing this context. And the reason I do is because down there he talks about giving thanks for all things within the will of the Lord. Okay? We don't give thanks for car accidents. We resist them. We don't give thanks for sickness. We resist it. Amen? Amen? And if you're in a car accident, we can thank God that no one got hurt or things like that, but God doesn't even want you in an accident. That's how much He loves you. Aren't you glad God's good? Amen. You know, what if, what, if, what if, like some people say and teach, well, you know, if you hang around with God, He might give you cancer. How many know I don't want to hang around with Him? If, if you know, hey man, hang around with me and I might burn your house down. Don't hang out with me. <laughs> Amen? But that's what people say about God. They say that crap. Crap, I've 
Try to, I meant junk. I'm sorry, it makes me angry. It's a righteous anger. Not at people, but at the, pe that the doctrines that hurt people. They're wicked. God is not up there controlling everything. If he is, he's doing a pretty bad job. Amen. All right, moving right along. So, wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So, I can understand what the will of the Lord is. Somebody say amen. amen. Or God would have been unfair to say that. Okay, next verse. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Now, I want to find, I got it wrote down here. I looked up the word excess um, somewhere. I know what it means if, if I don't, can't find it, because I wanted to read it to you because it's really, really good. Uh, it means, um, oh well, I'll just tell it to you. I'll, I'll read it off here. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled, but be filled. Somebody say filled. filled. It means to be crammed. Somebody say crammed. crammed. With the Spirit. Now the word excess is a powerful word. It mean, it's, a, so, it's from the Greek word sozo, which means saved. And it's got what's called an alpha privative in front of it. That means not saved. So don't get drunk where people act like idiots and act like there's no salvation. That's what he's saying. What, what uses this same word in the King James in 1 Peter 4.4 4, where it says, wherein they think you're strange, that you don't run with them to the same excess of asoteria, asozo, no salvation, speaking evil of you, okay? All right, now with that said, okay, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. Now I want to read this to you about excess. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. Praise God. I must have had it on another thing because I go through a lot of different things. But, here, but notice it says, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay. Be filled. Everybody say be filled. Be, means be crammed. It's the present tense. I've told you this before. Which means a continuous, ongoing action. So if, if I'm, I'm commanded to be filled with the Spirit, right? Not just one time. How many know this is a big mistake? I, I've heard of Catherine Coleman, somebody from way back in the 70s, and she would get up and these people would get up and brag, man, I was filled with the Spirit 20 years ago. I was filled with the Spirit that was this many years ago. And she got up and said, some of you have been filled with the, the Holy Spirit 20 years ago and haven't been filled a day since. It's the truth. We need to be constantly filled with the Spirit. Now, it's also in the passive voice. Passive voice means the subject, which is the believer. You and I receives the action. So constantly be receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And here's what's really powerful too. It's in, in the Greek verbiage is in the imperative mode, which means it's a commandment. You need it. Without it, you're sunk. You know, I notice people. I can tell people that are filled with the Spirit because they're consistent. You know why people are like this? Because if you're not built up, you're run down. Do you know that? If you're not built up in the things of God, I promise you, you're run down. Some people have been run down so much they don't even know the difference. We live like that so we become familiar with it. God has an abundant life for us, guys. And that life is, man, I'm walking in joy no matter what. Walking in sunshine. Oh, <laughs> S-O-N shine. Amen? God wants us to walk in sunshine no matter what it looks like out there. And that's all in Him. But you got to go God's way. We can't have God's fullness by going our own way. I, I just want to do it my way, God. And you just over... And then people get mad at God. Proverbs 19 says, The foolishness of man perverts his way. And then his heart, the Amplified Bible says, bears a grudge against God. In other words, he goes his own way. He does his own thing. And I'm speaking primarily about believers right now and unbelievers. And then he blames God. How many times have I heard, God, why didn't you do something? I got a thing on my phone where it says, where's God at in all this? <laughs> like God's just up there uh, going to get in and, make, and change people's wills and make them do all these things. God's not doing that or you'd have broke Adam's back on the way to the tree. Amen? God gave us a will. Love's not love unless free will's involved. Come on. That's good. So be not drunk with wine. I don't know how much time we're looking at here. Thank you, Aaron. Oh, praise God. Be not drunk with wine. Where is that excess? You know, I got to say this to you too. And I said this the other week. I love the Bible because there's always a do and the don't. The church will take stuff like this and say, hey, don't be drunk. And then they stop right there. That's not what it says. There's always a do. Here, be not drunk with wine. Where is unsavedness? 
but be being filled with the Holy Ghost. There's your answer. And by the way, let me tell you this too. These verses precede the submission verses. It starts about verse 22, 21, 22, where it says, submit one to another. And then it starts, husbands, love your wives, wives, she that you reverence, husband, all that. Those are all preceded by being crammed full of the Holy Ghost. What's the point? It's being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the oil that makes for good relationships. That's the oil that makes for a good marriage. Come on. See, we want to pull that out of context. And why well, I went to the marriage seminar and they told me 15 verses of how to treat my husband or my wife and, you know, or 15 steps or whatever it is. I tried it and I did it for, a, you know, three days and then I stopped doing it. Why? You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the problem with a lot of our teaching today. We leave the Holy Ghost out because we think we can do it in our own strength. Man thinks he's a whole lot hotter than he is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on. See, you cannot be full of the Holy Ghost if you're still full of yourself. If, you st if I have a water bottle there and it's full of water and I want to put some Coca-Cola in it or what, guess what I got to dump out? The water. <laughs> That's pretty basic. But see, some people think God comes alongside my greatness or my perceived greatness, right? And then he adds his anointing because after all, I know what I'm doing. None of us know what we're doing. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. So be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be being filled, present, passive, imperative, with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Now, once again, spirit, soul, and body. In my spirit, I'm already completing Christ, right? Yeah. But how many know I'm not just a spirit? I have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and I also have a physical body. So that's what he's talking about when he says, be filled with the one who lives in your spirit. Be crammed, be constantly filled. How, Chris? I'm glad you asked. Next verse. Next verse. Speaking to yourselves. Now, how many of you know this just isn't on Sunday? Thank God for Sunday. And listen, I want to challenge people to esteem the worship higher than we do. We need to be a worshipful people. We need to be a thankful people. We need to be a people with an attitude of gratitude. We need to be rejoicing no matter what it looks like. You get around some Christians, and I, I, I think, golly, I think I want to go kill myself. I mean, what's the use? <laughs> I'm joking. But listen, we should be, the high, we should be high on the hog with, with Jesus. But how do you do that? You release it through your mouth, through praise and love, right here. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How are we filled with the Spirit? Speaking to myself constantly in psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms. And what are those? And I'm glad you ask. All right, I want to read something to you before I go to psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. First of all, if someone were to, I want to read this to you. If someone were to pass out, what would we do? We would check their pulse. In the same sense, checking our praise lives is how we check our spiritual pulse. If, you're, if your faith is healthy, guess what's coming out of your mouth from your heart? Constantly. You're a praiser. God, you, get around, you ever get around somebody and they're just so happy all the time? Just does something for you? I say, I've never met anybody like that. <laughs> That's the sad reality. In the church, we should be just the opposite. We should be a praising bunch of people. We should be so happy. -filled. Well, I will when I just get this or get that or move here or do that. No, you won't because the issue is the heart. In everything, give thanks. I said that the other week. Because that's God's will in Christ Jesus concerning you. Not for everything, but in every situation, give thanks. You know what I noticed? I couldn't walk from lifting them heavy boxes yesterday because this foot was sore. Roger and Linda played for me. How many know I'm walking pretty good? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord of glory. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Glorify God from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Now let me say this to you. When I talk about praise and we get into this, I'm going to use praise, I'm going to use thanksgiving, and I'm going to use worship interchangeably, synonymously. Amen? I am aware of the Hebrew words and you know one means the moonwalk and spin on your head and all that other stuff. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not important. What's important is your heart. Lamentation 3.41 says, Lift up your hearts with your hands unto God in heaven. 
Joel says in Joel 2.13, in the Old Testament, they would rend their garments in repentance. He says, he says, rend your heart and not your garment. Just because I go through the outward motion of something doesn't mean I've changed my heart. That's what I said. If you hear this message, you apply this message, you keep hearing this message, we're going to stay on it for a little bit, and, and, and you begin to do this message, I guarantee you one thing, your attitude will change. And eventually your circumstances will change. What does it say in Psalm 67? That, that, that when, when they praised the Lord, then the earth yielded her increase. Why? Because we let God in. We let God in. God can't come in independent of your, your will and my will. The language of faith is praise, worship, thanksgiving. That's the language of praise. That's how you tell where your pulse is at. Amen. Listen, one hour, guys. Start with an hour. If we can't come off cold turkey of murmuring, we're going to say one hour. I'm not going to complain. If I have to go by myself, I'm not going to be around complainers. And I'm just going to praise God. And when I want to whine and complain, I'm going to say, thank God I got this. I got my health. I got a roof over my head. I got clothes. I'm blessed. I'm born again. I'm spirit filled. I got a Bible. I live in a country like America. I have freedoms. I can go to McDonald's. <laughs> Some of you might not thank the Lord for that. Maybe. I don't know. But what a blessing. What a blessing. We're blessed. We're blessed. Paul and Silas, and I may get to this, I don't know, they were in prison after doing the work of the Lord. They were doing God's work. Acts 16. They, they cast a demon out of a, a possessed girl, a demonized girl. They cast it out. Next thing you know, they're in prison. They're down there in chains. Backs bloodied. And at midnight, the darkest time of the night, the prisoners heard them praising God. Now, that's a prosperous soul. That's a prosperous soul. None of us got it. Has, have any, were any of you in prison last night with your back bloodied and chained to a wall? There ain't even any prisons like that around America. I mean, it's all TV and cable and whatever they all have and horseshoes and lifting weights and shooting hoops. I mean, that's, that's not bad. I mean, seriously. That's pretty, pretty... I mean, none of us have it that bad. Why aren't we praising the Lord? Why are we, why would we complain so much? Why when we got so much? I'll tell you what, I'm determined by the grace of God, I'm going to be a consistent praiser. And I'm telling you, I fight. Because I'll find myself just, mine's here and all of a sudden, you know, self-pity kicks in and all that stuff. You just want to, duh, this ain't right or that ain't right. Why ain't this and why ain't that? You know what? It's wrong. Neither murmur ye in 1 Corinthians 10, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. I don't want that to be me. Where are we at? Um, Psalms, hymns. Um, if we don't live lives that are constantly giving thanksgiving and praise unto God, we are not spiritually healthy. Did you catch that? Now, I'm not saying our position is secure, but see, people mess up position with manifestation in our walk. If I'm not a praiser, my, my faith is not healthy. But the good news is I can change that. You know, I'm one of these guys. I really do love it when I find out I'm the problem. Most of the time, unless it's my wife. <laughs> then I don't like it. I'm just being honest. <laughs> but like it's my brothers and stuff. That I don't have. I struggle with that too. <laughs> but you know, I, but when it comes to God, when I find out I'm the issue, I like that. Because by the grace of God, I can change. And God's been showing me this more and more and more. Listen to your words. Listen to your words. Listen to what you're saying. Listen, I'm going to get into psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I'm going to talk about spiritual language. I want to talk about all this. But let's just start with psalms. Uh, let me... Oh, I love this. This is so good. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. And then I'll, I'm going to read this to you. Living a life of praise is not only the most enjoyable way to live, but it's also one of the most powerful ways to change your life. Who wants to change your life? We all do. That's why we're here. That's why we're growing. Right? Well, I'm already changed. I just want to slap people like that sometimes. <laughs> because they take one facet, your spirit, and then they don't understand. And, and I question if they are sometimes. Just because you said a prayer one time doesn't mean you actually got born again. A lot of people said a prayer because someone coached them through it. And listen, we didn't challenge that, but I always try to say, you've got to mean it in your heart. If you just repeat after me and you don't mean it in your heart, it doesn't do anything. All right, moving right along. So praise isn't isn't like the caboose that just follows what happens. It's more like the engine of the train that makes things happen. I think it's Psalm 65. Let's look at that. I want to think it's 5 and 6. And we'll come back here. 
Because I'm going to show you this quick. We're just about done. We're gonna, we got a lot to say about psalms, hymns, and spiritual song. Uh, 60, I'm sorry, 67. 5. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought 67. I said 65. 67 verse 5. I believe that's what it is. 67. Psalm 60. Yeah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Stop. Let, 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 let. Let, let. You know the devil hates praise? He hates it so much that when he was tempting Jesus uh, on, on the mountain, Matthew 4 and Luke 4, he said, listen, if you'll just bow down and worship me. Yeah. What do you think the devil wants? Yeah. And when we don't praise God and, and we murmur and complain, in essence, I believe we're giving praise inadvertently to the devil. Come on. Praise the Lord, guys. Praise the Lord. Thank Jesus. Thank the Lord for this beautiful day. Oh, it's overcast. Get over it. It's wonderful. It's a gorgeous day. It's actually cool. Rich likes it like this. The bees don't, as I found out. <laughs> but he does. Let, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Next verse. Then, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Now, I'm aware that other translations word it differently, but this is accurate. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Amen? Now, let me show it to you in the Amplified. This verse, Amplified. The earth has yielded its harvest in evidence of God's approval. In evidence of God's approval. Even an our God will bless us. How many know if you're born again, you're already blessed? But how many know there's a lot of blessed Christians that don't walk like they're blessed? Right? But if I'm already blessed, shouldn't it be automatic? Thank you, Aaron. Shouldn't it be automatic? No. Praise the Lord. Receive the Lord. Listen, the pulse of your faith is how much you're praising the Lord. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, King James. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, King James. Thank you. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Leave that up there for a minute. The same way. So what is he talking about? Receiving. 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 The same way we receive Jesus, walk that way. The same way I received Jesus, walk that way. The same way I received Jesus, walk that way. So what is he talking about? Receiving. Next verse. Rooted and built up in him. Established or established in the faith as he hath been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. How do you abound in faith? Look at this. Establish in the faith. You abound in faith when you abound in thanksgiving. You abound in faith when you abound in thanksgiving. Flip side, you're not abounding in faith when you're abounding in no thanksgiving, or worse yet, murmuring. Come on, people. We're blessed. Well, I prayed and it didn't work. What's your mouth saying? Start praising the Lord. In everything, by prayer and supplication, be careful, anxious, worrisome over nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Come on, people. Praise and worship is about focus. If you're truly praising God, you're focused on Him and not on your problem. Come on, people. This is good stuff. We need to be the praisingest bunch on the planet. You know why Christians get jealous and all that stuff sometimes? You know why? Because they believe God took and blessed somebody else and basically took from them to bless that person. That's what they think in their heart. But when you know God's got more than... God is so big, He can make every person feel like they're the only person on the planet. Isn't that awesome? And He loves you. Amen? So, the way we abound in faith is we abound in thanksgiving. No thanksgiving means not abounding in faith. No thanksgiving. One more. I want to read just one more. Everyone agrees praise is good. Would you agree with that? This is why I want to say this right here. We have all think we know this. Including yours truly. But I, I realize I don't know this as well as I thought. Because if I did, my, my words would be different. Oh, well, they're better than some. Well, who am I comparing myself with? I need to go by God's standard. See, that's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 12. You're not wise when you compare yourself among one another. You become of the number. That's not smart. Other people aren't your standard. The Word of God is. Why? Because God loves you. Now listen, we all agree it's good, but very few feel the responsibility to praise the Lord. 
when they don't feel like it. Very few people get up in the morning and plan on being depressed. Who gets up in the morning and says, I think I'm going to be depressed today. That's not like a good option. Who does that? But what happens? Circumstances come. Things come at you. And all of a sudden, you start looking at those circumstances. And then you start giving voice to those circumstances because that's your focus. God is good, people. And God is good to you. And God wants to get His goodness to you, through you, in your life. Hang on. People would like to be happy and praise God, but they don't feel they have any control over this. Stop. God gave us the controls. The devil doesn't have them. Nobody else has them. Okay, let me say this to you. I love what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4. He said, he, he told Timothy, he said, don't let anybody despise your youth. That always blows me away because I would have said, I would have wrote the letter to the church if I was Paul. And I said, you guys start treating Timothy right. Wouldn't we have all done that? But Paul said, hey, you don't let anybody despise your youth. You have controls, my point. Well, it's my husband. It's my wife. It's the fact that I don't have a husband. I don't have one. It's, it's this person. It's that person. It's my teacher. It's this. It's my job. It's none of that. You need to praise the Lord. Start lifting your voice. Start thanking God. Start worshiping Him. Start magnifying Him. In your own words, we'll get into psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. If you don't know what to say, there's 150 psalms to help you. <laughs> you need any other help? We got plenty of them up here. I'm going to share a lot of verses with you. You start meditating on these things. My word, that's under the old covenant. How much more you and I under the new? Can you imagine if we became a praising bunch of people? What the world, my, what's up with you guys? You're always so full of joy. But I know your circumstances, they're not always perfect. And yet you praise the Lord no matter what. Wow, yeah. People start saying, man, they must really have something. <laughs> See, whenever we try to do things in our own strength, outside of the presence of God, we're into some form of religious legalism. All right, just about done. Hang on. So most people don't feel they have any control. They think that praise is just a response to what happens. Guilty. <laughs> See, none of this stuff. I love this, guys. This is, get, this is correcting me. This is the Word of God chasing me. You know what it tells me? God loves me. God loves you. You have control. When it's going bad, praise the Lord. When it's going good, praise the Lord. When it's going mediocre, praise the Lord. Lift your voice. When people want to murmur, say, I love you, but I'm out of here. <laughs> Seriously. You hang with them. You're, I heard a quote one time, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that. Think about that. You know one of the reasons I love Ramin so much? Oh, man, hopefully he won't hear this. Because <laughs> he just believes it. He just loves God. I mean, he is just so into Jesus. And man, I love that. That does something to my heart. Amen? Hallelujah. We think praise is just an automatic response to what happens, that everything, if everything is going right, that we'll automatically do it. That's definitely not the case. You know a lot of people have good things happen to them and they're still complaining. Some people... If they get to heaven, we'll find problems there. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> if they're born again, they'll get to heaven. Now, Lord, why did you set the throne there? I think it should be over here. <laughs> this street's a gold stuff. I'll tell you what, that's a waste. You know, you should have put that in. Hey, many peats. Can I get out of here? It won't be like that in heaven. Amen. <laughs> you know, one of the things I read in this book that Joel and I are reading on near-death experiences, a Christian book, and, they, and it's something that really, really ministered to me, and I'm going to get into this. But they said that in heaven, when you stand before the Lord, you can't help but praise the Lord, or you'll blow up. It just burst out of you. You know, you can have that. To, I don't know what degree. I don't think there's any limit, even in this life. We'll talk about that as we get further in this message. Guys, I'm, I'm going to close here. I know you don't believe me, but I am. Uh, one hour, guys. Let's just try an hour. Let's start on a daily basis. Just take an hour and just try to say, you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to murmur. I'm just going to praise the Lord. And it doesn't have to be a praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. It doesn't have to be like that. Just, man, I love you, Jesus. You're so awesome. I appreciate you. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Find a psalm. I love that. Psalm 113.3. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord Jesus Christ, I've added that. His name is to be praised, but that's what it's referring to. 
Amen. I will run the way of your commandments when you give me a heart that is willing. Psalm 119, 32, King James Amplified. And in other words, God, when you're born again, God's given you a heart that's willing. But will you side with that willingness? You have the control. Praise the Lord. There's a ton. And when I say a ton of verses, I'm not kidding. You're going to see that, man, you want to bless God? You start blessing God. You start praising Him. You, you talk about God getting involved in your situation. If you're a praiser and not a murmur, the devil will flee. He can't stand it. You know when the Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. One of the greatest ways to submit yourself to God is lift your voice in praise and adoration. It's one of the most powerful weapons that you and I have. Now we're not just, we're using it because we love God. We just love him. But know that it's a weapon and know Satan can't stand it. Listen to people talk sometimes. I mean, I do. I'm shocked sometimes, especially if you get around people that aren't even believers. It just stuns me how people live because it is so negative, so ailments and negative and this and that. I'm thinking, gee, many Pete's people live like this? We have, guys, we have Jesus. Man, I'll tell you what, we can praise the Lord for Jesus. Let's just do, take a couple minutes. Just say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus.